so differently than a lot of people. Water and the lack of water that we have on the farm. Hey guys, it's Alex from European Coffee Trip and in this video I would like to show you 8 coffee documentaries that you can watch right now and you don't need to pay anything for that because they are for free on YouTube and Vimeo. So let's get started. Documentary number one is called Coffee, Italians do it better. Coffee. Italians Do It Better is the first Italian documentary film about specialty coffee filmed and produced by Federica Bellestieri and Federico Lucas Pesetta in 2017. In over 40 minutes, they interview a bunch of Italian coffee experts including Andre Godina, Marco Cremonese or Francesco Sanapo on the various topics of coffee. They go from green coffee and roasting to espresso preparation and barista work. Filmmakers do an amazing job to put a specialty coffee and its third way to the context of the traditional Italian coffee culture. The film brings you to cafes, barista trainings and workshops and it shows you also manufacturing facilities of brands like La Marsocco. The ultimate question was what will arrival of Starbucks to Italy bring to the Italian coffee scene. In maniera ironica, ma in maniera ci credo tantissimo in questo, in questo concetto. Documentary number two is called Flower of Flowers. Coffee is a crop that is very sensitive to climate change. Flower of Flowers, short documentary produced by Stamptown and directed by Greg Hunt. For half an hour, you'll be taken to Guatemala by Jim Kelso, who is Stamptown quality assurance manager, and his friends, two pro skateboarders, Ray Barbie and Rick McCrank and an artist, Lori Damiano. Last time I thought I'd bring along a few friends, meet the Zelaya family, and share how coffee, culture, and the people of Guatemala are all intertwined. The overall theme of the film is climate change and how it affects farmers in Central America. Rain is, in my opinion, the worst thing climate change has been affecting us. You will see main characters talking about the weather conditions, different coffee varieties, and also culture on Bella Vista Mill and Santa Clara Farms with local coffee producers. In a casual style, you will see coffee lovers without a professional background discovering the complexity of the coffee industry. Yeah. That was good though, actually. All right. Documentary number three is called Gender in Coffee. One of the biggest social issues, gender equality, is an important topic also in the coffee industry. How are women affected by social prejudices and standards and how they deal with it? Gender is about all of us. Women being empowered enough to feel like they can do the same job that a man can do. Over one hour long documentary by Xavier Hamon and Hannah Stapleton, Gender in Coffee gives an insight into the daily life of coffee producing families in Mexico, capturing the social dynamic between men and women. <laughs> in the second part of the film, it has the perspective of the consumer world, mainly in the United States, from coffee trading companies, coffee roasters and consumers. A major part of the documentary is filmed in Spanish language, with English subtitles. Mucho trabajo en café. <laughs> documentary number four is Women in Coffee. Entonces empezamos con el café orgánico con manos de mujer. In a 13-minute long documentary produced by Equal Change in 2016, you will follow five women in five different coffee-related jobs. We will start in Honduras meeting women producing their own coffee. And then you will meet coffee buyer, quality manager, coffee roaster and cafe manager. Their jobs are different, but love for coffee and pride to be a woman in the coffee industry is shared among them be able to tell you what it smells like. And that's what makes it a craft. That's why, you, that's why humans still roast coffee. Documentary number five is called Coffee, Coffee. Coffee, Coffee is a 10 minute long film about specialty coffee culture in Portland, Oregon, directed and produced by Jory Kiva. Before we take a sip of coffee, 
the coffee that's in our cup has taken a very long journey to get. It profiled three influential coffee roasters from the area. Ristretto Roasters, Coava Coffee Roasters, and Sterling We coffee. talk about specialty coffee and why it's better and why it's worthwhile. Uh, it is not subjectively better, it's objectively better. Among topics discussed in the documentary are how specialty coffee affects the market, the importance of detail, attention to flavor, design, and connecting consumers through social media. It's not just about getting a really good cup of coffee, because you could do that at home, but it's more about the experience that you have, that, that nice little social engagement. Documentary number six is called The World Bar the Championship, a Global Influence. The World Barista Championship, a Global Influence is the short documentary produced by Prima Coffee in 2015 and narrated by Steve Reinhardt. If ever there were an Olympics of coffee, the World Barista Championship would be the most exciting event. It contains interviews with former World Barista Champions like James Hoffman or Tim Van Lubo and other coffee influencers including Barista Magazine's founder Sarah Allen. Being a WBC champion, it still is considered like the ultimate title that you can win. They all talk about the Barista Championships influence over the specialty coffee industry and what it means to be the World Barista Champion. On the background of the World Barista Championships 2015 in Seattle, the film also explains the format of the competitions and why it is yet not receive higher engagement from the general public. Documentary number seven is called Roasted. Roasted is a short documentary produced by Matt Ellenbogen that portrays Chuck Patton, the co-founder of Bird Rock Coffee Roasters in a small surf town in California. That was seven days a week and there was no time off and there were no weekends and there was no vacation. Chuck and his wife Elke tell us a story of falling in love with specialty coffee, starting to roast coffee, opening the coffee shop and eventually becoming the community spot for coffee lovers and ever-winning roastery. Coffee before we find out anywhere else. We know he's actually been to all the countries that he sources coffee from. The film follows Chuck also on the coffee sourcing trip to Guatemala and El Salvador where he developed their long-term partnership with the coffee producers that are facing problems like leaf rust. That's why we kind of don't bother with fair trade anymore. We don't bother with other certifications because we found that the amount that we pay the farmer, they can do more with it than what they would get through fair trade or, any, or anything else because we're paying so much more than fair trade. And documentary number eight is called Estate Grown Coffee in Highlands of Tanzania. Last coffee documentary I want to suggest is our short film from the first coffee origin trip to Tanzania. In 2016, we spent a week at Mondul Coffee Estates in the northern highlands close to Mount Kilimanjaro, absorbing all we could about the coffee production. And I think a lot of people forget about actually how much work is involved with one cup of coffee. Based on the interview with the general manager Dean, chef agronomist James and quality and export manager Edwin, we take you on the nine minute journey through planting and growing coffee trees, harvesting, processing, and cupping in the beautiful area around the Monduli mountain. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you are now motivated to watch several hours of free coffee documentaries online because we believe that you learn a lot and you learn a lot about so many different aspects of coffee. And if you know something that we missed in this video, let us know in the comments and we will check it out. And I'm looking forward, really looking forward to see you in the next video very, very soon. Thank you, bye-bye.